Hey there, Python trainer Ruven Lerner here. Have you noticed that the prices of chocolate and coffee and some other goods have been going up over the last few years? You're not alone. The World Bank has also noticed this. The World Bank has been tracking prices of a whole lot of commodities for decades already. And every month they come out with what they call the pink sheet, a spreadsheet, and here I'll show it to you, a spreadsheet of World Bank commodity price data showing the prices of a whole lot of different things. So for this week's Bamboo Weekly, I used Pandas and Seaborn to track and understand commodity prices for cocoa, which is important in one of my favorite little snacks, cacao nibs that I put in yogurt and so forth, but also in some other products. So here are some questions that I asked you. First of all, we want to read the monthly price data into a data frame. So I'm going to say import Pandas as PD. I'll say file name equals, I'm going to just like say users, Ruben, uh, Bamboo Weekly, notebooks, data, and then we'll say BW109XLSX. And then I'll say DF equals PD read Excel from this file name. And we should have a great view of the data, except that we don't. What's going on here? DF shape. Well, the shape is zero, zero. The good news is it won't take much time or much memory for us to analyze this data. The bad news is it doesn't really represent the data. What's going on? Well, if we go back to the Excel sheet here, you'll see that there are actually four different tabs. And each tab can be read into pandas either together or separately. So I actually have to state here sheet name equals, and I'll say here monthly prices. And once I do that, oh, ho, ho, now we have some data. The only problem is the data is kind of messed up. And it's messed up because look at this. Here, I'll bring the spreadsheet back again for you to see. We have a few lines here which are explanatory. The actual data starts much below on line seven. So what I want to do is I want to say here, we're going to say skip rows equals six. And now if we run this, aha, you see now that, well, wait a second. Now the column names are being called starting with what whatever was in line six. That's because it takes that first line as the header names. So I actually want to say header equals none. Don't use those as header names. And now we have the data. But now we have sort of a related problem, which is we don't have any names for our columns. But the names are there. They are there, but they're kind of hard to get to. So here's what I decided to do. I decided to read the file in twice. And the first time I said column names equals, and I'm going to get the file name and the sheet name and the skip rows, but I'm actually going to say header equals, and that's going to be on line four dot columns. So here I'm grabbing the columns from this. And then I can say here, oops, say here, names equals column names. And if we run this, look at that. Now we have the column names from the file, ignoring the units, which we don't really care about at this point because we're not that serious about the analysis. So the only problem is we've still got this first column here unnamed, which we want to rename. So I'm going to say here, I'm going to like do a little parentheses here for method chaining, and then we'll do this, make this line up a little nicer. And then I'll say here dot rename, and I'll say columns equals, and we'll say unnamed, zero should be renamed to date. And look at that. And rename is this fantastic method that we say, I want to rename the columns and we hand it a Python dictionary. Here's what it was and here's what I want it to be. That's great, except that these are not actually dates. These are strings. I want to interpret them as dates though, because as I said in my question, I want that to be a date time and I want to make it the index. Well, making the index is not hard. I can just say set index to be date. That's the easy part, but making it into date time values, for that I'll need to say, inside of read Excel, I'll need to say here, parse dates equals, and we'll just say zero, because that's the first column there and we haven't yet named it. And that's not gonna be enough, because if it parses the dates, it needs to know the date format. And if it's not a default standard date format, bad news. So I'm gonna say here, date format equals, percent Y, percent capital Y, which means four digit year, the letter M, and then percent little M. And if I do this, then it should actually know what to do. And look at that. Now we have dates there. And if I, in fact, look, first of all, what's the shape of this thing that we just got? 782 lines by 71 columns, that's a lot of columns. If I say here now, df.index, we'll see that it's a date time index. That is fantastic. But there's one little thing that we didn't get right. So I said the columns should have textual names, but not the measures from the row. Make sure all columns are numeric. Are all columns numeric? Let's find out. 
if I say df.info, it'll summarize for me the D types of all the columns. And we see that we have float 64 for many columns, 46 columns, but there are a bunch that are object. Now object usually means that pandas was unable to identify that it could use either integers or floats for a particular column. And the reason, well, why would that be? Let's try to figure it out. If I say here, let's just get my data frame, df head, and let's grab, uh, let's see, here, let's grab one that's an object. So dap, I have no idea what dap is. So I'm gonna say df of dap. I'll say as type float. What could go wrong? Well, actually a lot will go wrong. We know that it'll go wrong because it can't. And if we scroll all the way down to this error, we will see it can't convert dot, dot, dot to a float. In other words, the data set uses dot, 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 these three dots in a row as an indicator that there's no data. Well, that's not a standard thing. So we have to say here is NA, uh, any values, uh, any, NA, any values equals, and we say here dot, dot, dot. Okay, and we give a list there because we can give a list. I run this now and all is good. And we do DF info and look at this. Well, it's better. We still have 22. So what's going on with those? Well, let's do phosphate rock, always a favorite. By the way, if we use DAP now for that, DAP will work just fine. But if I use phosphate rock, it'll now say, oh, you can't do that because look, it's a different dot, dot, dot. It's a one character ellipsis rather than three characters. So I scroll back up here and here in my list, I'll now say comma this. And so now either of these two strings, if read Excel encounters, it will be treated as nan, which is a float value. So now I run this again and then I check the shape. It's good. Check the date, time, index. It's good. Check info and says, look, all of them are now floats. So we now have 71 columns, 71 different uh, commodities that have been tracked by date because the index is there, right? DF dot, we'll just do a DF here. And we see it's from the 1st of January, 1960, all the way to the 1st of February, 2025. So that's a lot of time there. And we can now keep track of these commodity values. And we don't have to worry about being treated as strings because we have NANs. Okay, not bad. Let's get the second question then. And the second question was using Seaborn, we want to track, let's see, price, the price of cacao over each month during the last five years. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, first of all, I'm going to say import Seaborn as SNS. That's the standard sort of alias for it. I should add, Seaborn is like a wrapper around Matplotlib. Matplotlib, super powerful, super flexible. I always have to look things up when I use matplotlib. I typically use the pandas API for plotting, but Seaborn is pretty easy too, and it's beautiful and it's really flexible. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say, I've got my data frame. Well, then what? Well, we want the last, what did I say? The last five years, five times 12 is 60. So I'm gonna say here dot I lock minus 60 until now. So that'll give me just the last 60 rows. And sure enough, it's from the 1st of March, 2020. Can't believe that was five years ago, but it was. So now we have this, and I'm only really interested in the cocoa values, right? So we'll do this. I'll say here, cocoa. Okay, so now we have a series. We have a series because always when you have one uh, column, you get a series. Now what? Well, now I want to run sns.lineplot, right? That's how I can plot a line. Here's the problem though. Lineplot is, is a Seaborn function and I want to use method chaining. So I can't say dot line plot because it doesn't exist. It's line plot is not an attribute on a data frame. And I can't say SNS line plot because that's not a, ma a method either. What I can do is say dot pipe, and then I say lambda of df, and then I can say SNS dot line plot on df. Actually, it's not going to be df. It's going to be a series, but shh, don't, don't tell anyone. All right, and so if I do that, now what's going to happen? Now the data is gonna be passed along to, well, it's our series, but I'm gonna call it data frame anyway, and that will be passed then to SNS line plot. And if we run this now, look at that. Look at that. We can see that cocoa prices have indeed gone way up. Now I did ask you to have a dot for each data point. So we can say here, we go back here and say then marker equals O, and it'll give us a nice little dot. And if I want to label each axis, then what I can do is I can say dot set and dot set takes a bunch of keyword arguments and I can pass that. So I can say here like X label equals the date. I can say here Y label equals the price. And then I can say here the title equals cocoa prices. And voila, we now see how much cocoa prices have gone up 
over the last number of years, why I cannot get cacao nibs in my local store, and uh, all sorts of fun stuff like that. The other questions that I'm not going to go into here that are for paid Bamboo Weekly subscribers talk about other commodities, tracking it over time, and even how has the price of cocoa gone up or down uh, correlated with gold, believe it or not. Hope this was interesting and helpful. Let me know what you think and what questions you have in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, as they say, and I'll be back real soon with lots more about Python and pandas. Thanks for watching.